Now, if you thought Wonder Woman and Nancy Drew were good at fighting crime, just wait until you meet our next guest. It was always her dream to serve and protect. With 12 years as a special agent for the Secret Service, Evie Pumpuris has protected not one, but three US presidents. She's investigated some of the most serious criminal cases in America. And now, Evie is helping others learn the tricks of the trade, sharing secrets about body language, lie detection, and human psychology. Fascinating. Former Secret Service agent Evie Pumpuris joins us now this morning from New York City. Evie, great to have you here. What an incredible inc a career that you've had. It's the sort of job that you only hear about, like in movies and things like that. So, what made you want to become a Secret Service agent? You know, <laughs> I wish I could say it was a straight path. Um, but I did always want to serve and protect others and I actually started off as uh, with the NYPD here in New York City as a police cadet. And I think just growing up and wanting to, to do more um, and to give of yourself, because I think we all kind of search in life, you know, uh, to find meaning in the things we do. And so law enforcement and helping people, helping criminal investigations, protecting others, it really spoke to me. As a Secret Service agent, Evie, we hear that you are one of a, a very few women who've protected multiple sitting presidents. You've worked with Clinton, Bush and Obama. What was that like? So I started under the Clinton presidency, and there typically are not that many women. I think there's twofold why the reason that is. I think a lot of women don't apply. They don't think that they can do this type of job. And also that the ones that do apply, there's, you know, an assessment process that you have to go through. There's also, it's a very physical job. Um, there's many law enforcement agencies, but I think of all of them, this is one of the most physical jobs because you have to not only work criminal but investigations and do search warrants and that nature, but you also have to physically be capable of protecting someone, of carrying somebody, carrying weapons and guns and ammo and gear. And that takes a lot of strength and stamina on that part. But I think that they are making an effort to try to bring in more diversity and more women. Um, you know, we've just seen President Clinton make headlines in recent days over his response for the Monica Lewinsky scandal back in the day. You were working with him probably at the time. So, you know, when something like that happens, you know, let's talk about that situation. There's a lot of heat on the president. What happens to the Secret Service in that situation? Are you working around the clock more? What happens to you guys? So I did start under the Clinton presidency, but Monica was before me. So this is the thing, a lot of people do ask that question, it's a good question, you know, when you see or if there's something that's happening that, you know, doesn't sit right, right? Um, do you say something? Do you do something? And you really don't. Your job is not to be the morality police, if that makes sense. Yeah. So here's the rub, you're there to protect, and if the person you're protecting is let's say engaging in something that you may personally not like per se, you you can't get involved ideally because now that person or those people you're protecting will not want you around. And there has to be a level of, of trust. So in order to do your job as an agent, you have to be within proximity to them when they're doing things in their personal life. And so you're not there to be the morality police per se, you're there to protect. And so you'll have an issue where they won't want you around, where they'll sneak away from you, where they'll hide things, where you won't have access, where they'll exclude you from a meeting. And once that starts happening, then you can't do the job. And, and that's where the problem lies. And yeah. even with Monica, all those years ago, a lot of those agents had to testify to what they saw and they didn't want to. And mainly because the, the role is I'm not here to watch what he or she is doing. I'm here to protect them. And the minute you, you pull me out of that role and you put me in this supervisory, I'm watching everything you're doing, now there's a problem. Yeah, I can definitely see the conflict. Mm -hmm. You're also, uh, um, Evie, one of only five women to ever receive a Valor Award by the Secret Service as a first responder in the September 11 attacks. Tell us about that. So we, we um, our offices at the time in New York were in one of the, the, the World Trade Center buildings, it was seven, and 
you know, again, when you're in that capacity, you're there to serve and protect. So it's not just everybody thinks you're just there to protect the president or these VIPs. And you really take an oath to protect all people. And I did what I thought was right, along with some of my other colleagues who did also receive the Valor Award. And we stayed to, to help people, to pull people out, to get people to safety. And it was a very, you know, chaotic day. And, you know, and, and truly at that time, I didn't even know what was happening. All you knew is that people were dying all around you. And I, I think what I did, I didn't do as an agent or as a law enforcement officer. I, I think I did it as a human being. Mm. That's what I felt. You know, you see your, your, you see the humanity. You see your brothers and sisters dying, and you can't just sit there and watch. And I think a lot of people would do that and, and have done that. It's amazing that you've jumped in and just done that, and and just you know, thoughtlessly just gone in and done that, which is your job, I know, but still it takes a, a great human to do that. Let's talk about what your work as a criminal right. investigator, Evie. You, you know, we hear you, you need to be quite strategic to get a confession out of somebody. So why don't you tell us your technique? So it's really interesting. When you watch a lot of these police movies, you'll see the interview, the interrogation, and people love it, but you see this really aggressive, you know, in your face. You did it. I know you did it. Good cop, You're going to go to prison. I'm going to lock you up. And it looks great. Right. And it looks great in television, you know, to have that conflict. But in real life, it doesn't work. And most, uh, sometimes a lot of law enforcement uh, does use this style and, and sometimes they don't get the proper training they they're, they're not sure of what they're doing but those who are really trained well and I was very lucky to be trained by the Department of Defense and by the service they teach you how to talk to people how to listen information and it's really learning and luring information out of people even yourselves as journalists and today I'm a journalist an investigative journalist you want to get the person you're talking to to give you information so when you have someone who's committed a horrible crime and you tell them you're going to go away to jail. You're going to be punished. You're going to be this. You're, you're garbage. You're bad. That person is not going to open up to you. They're just going to, they're going to, they're going to seal up. So mm. it's really about engaging people, creating empathy with people. And a lot of people don't, there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. You can empathize with people and say, I can understand why you did this. It doesn't mean you have to agree with it and really flip it around and be in that person's shoes. You want to get people to open up and you want to treat people with respect, whether you like them or not. And, and the thing is, if you treat people like garbage, you're going to get garbage. You're not going to get information. So you have to go in with that mindset, look, I need this information. I need to know if he did it or if he, he knows who did it, right? And so if you go in there like the morality police, I'm here to make you feel bad, in the short term, good for you. But in the long term, you're going to get nothing. People, people don't talk to people they don't like. Mm-hmm. Evie, you know what? We could talk to you for oh, a no. whole lot longer because we have a whole bunch more questions, but we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.